Making her boat show debut at the 2022 Cannes Yachting Festival is the 26.5 meter Grand Banks 85. The new flagship of the fleet is the latest example of the Singapore-based company's pursuit of performance and fuel efficiency based on their so-called V-Warp semi-displacement platform. But before going any further, let's find out exactly what that means. VWAP technology is hull shape, construction techniques, and the use of very exotic materials, basically being you know, carbon fibre. You know, and our hull shape is nothing unique. You know, it's a V-warped you know, semi-displacement hull form. Um, it's very common in a lot of boats, but the, the, the key to us is you know, the other two factors, which is construction techniques. You know, this boat is built like a, you know, a high-tech ray shot. Um, all the bulkheads, floors, furniture, everything is lightweight composite panel um, or you know, glass into the hull. So, becomes a very stiff component, um, no creaking, no moaning. Um, you know, it's only, it's only disadvantages, it's, it's very expensive and time, time consuming to achieve, you know, so, but the ultimate product, you know, it's worth every bit of it. So um, that's a big deal for us. And obviously the use of the carbon fibre, that's where you have, you know, and, and, and very high end engineering, you know, composite engineering and, um, you know, just, it just takes the boats to the, the next level and that's why you see the performance of the, of the Grand Banks 85. So how do all these exotic materials and construction techniques translate into on-the-water performance and efficiency? Well, powered by twin 1,000 horsepower Volvo Penta IPS 1350 pods, the yacht has a top speed of 27 knots. And with 10,000 litres of fuel in the tank, at a cruising speed of 21 knots, she has a range of around 1,000 nautical miles. Impressive for an 85-foot boat. But it doesn't end there because at a full displacement speed of 10 knots, the range increases to 3,000 nautical miles. The Juby 85 is a light, shallow draft boat displacing less than 50 tonnes. And her fine bow entry means that she can handle quite rough seas with assurance. And she also runs nice and flat, and you can see that from the even wake she leaves behind her. So, you know, obviously <laughs> with the VWAP technology, there's just so many benefits, you know. The smoothest, the, it's sort of more about the effortless ride. You know, every, every speed it feels effortless. Um, our cruise speed was always, you know, designed around the 21 knot magic number to get that long range sort of high speed cruise. And yeah, we're, we're achieving a thousand miles at 21 knots, which is, you know, not many boats can, can, can actually do. Um, and, you know, it's just effortless. And you, as you see, you see by the wake, you feel by the performance, there's no shuddering, there's no shaking, you know. So, that's all the benefit of you know, what we're trying to achieve here. And um, I think as the future you know, goes ahead and, and fuel's becoming a bigger, bigger an issue with cost and availability and you know, emissions, um, you know, we're, we're not green, but we're, we're using half the fuel of anyone in the industry. So that's obviously a big step in the right direction. And um, with this V-Warp you know, platform, it's, uh, you know, we're perfectly aligning ourselves for the next power, you know, available power plant, basically. So that's quite exciting. So the owners have been on board this boat for the last three months, and as you can see, you know, it just doesn't look like that. So once again, the design is all about simple services, very ergonomic, um, you know, low maintenance. We want it to be a pleasure to own, not just from you know, a usability, but from a maintenance or lack of maintenance sort of perspective, you know. So it's worked out very well. The captain and the crew are very happy with the product. Um, the owners, as I said, have been on board for the last three months and have had a ball. They've done several thousand miles. And that's the good thing about the 21 knot high speed cruise. You know, you can go you know, good distances without having to worry about refueling. And um, they've just been adventuring all around the Mediterranean, so they're having a ball. While we're talking technical, I wanted to show you the engine rooms. And yes, engine rooms, plural, because there are two of them. From the big aft platform, we enter this full height lazarette with loads of space for water toys. And this room effectively separates the port and starboard engine compartments. Worthy of note is the teak decking inside the engine room. The easy access to the IPS engine, an important consideration on what still could be considered an owner-operated boat. And if it looks like there's not a lot of equipment in here, that's because there's another service room forward with water makers, inverters, AC and so on. So all the heavy machinery is kept low down in the hull to reduce the centre of gravity.
From the Lazarette, we also have access to the extremely comfortable crew quarters. Now, Mark Richards is not just the CEO of the company, he's also the head designer. And he clearly believes in the motto, happy crew, happy boat. Because what we have here are two single cabins with very wide berths, a shared bathroom, decent shower stall, good sized galley, cozy dinette, and the joinery here is easily on a par with the woodwork we find in the guest areas on the deck above. Aft cockpit, nice and big, as you can see. Plenty of room for dining and entertaining. And in the corner, we have a big bar unit with fridges, plenty of storage space, and this window actually slides up and down to open the interior to the exterior and vice versa. One step up and we're in the main salon and the impression here is of having space to spare. Now that's partly because the room is almost six meters wide, but it also has something to do with the tastefully discreet decor and the wraparound big windows. Now, I'm not normally a fan of dark wood on boats, but this teak has a special Japanese stain for a really distinguished look and feel. I really like it, it works. The galley is actually forward of the main lounge and dining room where you'd normally expect to find the interior helm station, which is perhaps why they've installed this neat little feature. Pop-up hatch with IPS joystick and full controls just in case you have to make an emergency maneuver while you're slaving away over a hot stove. Moving below deck, we have first an intermediate level with a day head and shower, as well as a twin single cabin and a VIP V-berth in the bow. The master stateroom is on the lowest level amidships to take advantage of the full beam. Big windows opening portholes, LCD glass in the bathroom, and this is something I really like. Beautifully integrated into the joinery. Ta-da! Piano keyboard. Before we were driving the boat from up here on the upper deck, and the Sky Lounge is one of my favorite places because usually it's an open space but the owners chose to have it enclosed so they can go cruising perhaps on chillier evenings later on in the season. But because of the big windows, some of which go up and down, and the enormous sunroof, it actually makes you feel that you're outside when you're inside, so to speak. Now, my only quibble would be that the open off deck has a gray painted finish. No doubt practical, but a bit of a shame to my mind considering you have real teak in the engine room. The Grand Banks 85 has something of a dual personality because at displacement speed, she's a blue water trawler, but at planing speed, she's a pretty fast cruiser. What differentiates this boat from others in her class is that she's both comfortable and fuel efficient, whatever the speed. And that, Grand Banks assures me, is thanks to her V-Warp platform. The 85 is the current flagship of the fleet. Any plans to build bigger? Yeah, look, we're currently looking at a 100 footer. That'll be the top you know, sort of um, size for us. The thing I love about it is it's very intimate. Once you go over 100 feet, you know, the boats become very complicated. And you know, we like the intimate build and the intimacy with our customers and design and you know, the purchasing of the product. So we're building boats for them, not for us. So that's the way it works. <laughs> 